and welcome back and today I want to talk about upgrade cards more precisely I want to talk about StarTech now StarTech is a brand that I talk about a lot on this channel largely because there have been solutions to not just data storage but general IT um, queries and issues I've had over the years where StarTech products have provided the answer they're one of those companies that I'm sure you can think of a dozen different ones whereby they produce very unique solutions maybe you need to match one kind of cable with another and no adapter exists or you've got a truly one-of-a-kind unique solution requirement where you need to mesh something like Thunderbolt with something a million years old and what companies like this do is they give you the ability to match that and get these things working together now one of the most uh, you know attractive features about StarTech for a number of users out there is their price point they are incredibly affordable their solutions that they put out there are not only affordable but typically you, you know painfully unique you can't get them anywhere and a lot of the time you look at solutions that are given to you from top tier brands like Synology, QNAP and more and you think, hmm, is there a cheaper alternative? Can I get some sort of third party alternative to those? So what I'm gonna be doing is a series of videos kicking off here. Um, I'm going to look at Synology NAS first and Synology actually have a number of PCI cards available to them. Right there at the top, we've got the 10 GBE upgrade card and we have their M2 NVMe upgrade card here, the M2 D18. And what that does is it lets you add M2 SSD cache to any NAS that has a PCIe slot and therefore use SSDs for caching, namely utilizing either standard M2 or NVMe M2 SSDs to get caching inside your device and up the speed. However, that is not a cheap card. In the case of the 10 GPE and the M2 um, NVMe and non NVMe cards, they will cost you a few hundred quid. Now, while that's going on, StarTech have had a card around for a number of years known as this, and I'm going to give you the full name, get ready. It is the PEX M2 SAT 32N1. I know, catchy name, right? And that goes for about 29 quid. This card here, which allows you to have two M2 SSD SATA based SSDs and an NVMe SSD as well, so three M2 slots and one of them being NVMe enabled and it allows you to install these inside a PC system. However, what I'm going to do today is I'm going to take this card, populate it with two SATA MV, uh, M2 SSDs and one NVMe SSD and I'm going to install this card inside that Synology and we're going to see if one, it will let us install the card and two, can it recognize the SSDs on board and give us access to those um, M2 or NVMe SSDs for caching? I'm going to also do a video later on doing this exact same thing with the QNAP NAS system and maybe even the Acer Store 2 when it arrives. But this is the card itself. We've got it ready. And the card, if we put it, we have featured it on uh, the YouTube channel before. On the end there, we've got LED indicators there at the bottom. At the top here, we've got the space for the two SATA-based NVMEs there. And on the other side, we've got on the back, I say NVMe SSDs. And on the rear, we've got one NVMe, so that's PCIe-based SSD slot there. We're going to install a series of M2s inside this card, get it installed in that Synology, and see what happens. So let's get started and move over to the screen. Right, so here I am on the desktop interface of the Synology DS2419 Plus. I've installed the StarTech card as we've discussed earlier. Hopefully on screen now we've got that recording of me installing the card and booting the device up for the first time. And a few minutes later, here we are on the DSM 6.2.2 user interface. And I'll be honest, I had a sneaky peek already, but I'm pleased to confirm that the card has been recognized. However, much like the testing I did with a QNAP NAS, it is not all perfect. So straight away, we've got our 4TB drive. That's our main volume on this device that for those that have been watching my other videos over the last few weeks, will know all about. But if we go down here to the SSD cache portion, we can create an area of SSD cache and only one drive has been noticed. Not two, but just one. If we come out of that option, and we look at the drive manager, we can see that the NVMe, the NVMe SSD 1TB drive has been 
recognized. So it hasn't recognized the two 860s on the other side of the card. It has only recognized that NVMe of which there's only one bay on this device. I know it's the cheapest chips card and considerably cheaper than the M2D18, but there's no denying that right now it looks like you can only recognize the one port on it. So can we generate some cash? Let's have a look. We click create, we go for read only cache, of course, because we've only got the one SSD. For those that aren't aware, read and write cache requires two um, SSDs for read and write caching in a RAID 1 environment. So we're going to do caching on that one drive inside. And again, this is way too much cache, to be honest, um, for this. I mean, at the moment, we are uh, you can see there it requires 378 on this 4TB, and we're using one terabyte of cache. So technically, we don't even need to use the whole drive, but I'm going to. Um, so we're going to see if this will let us generate some cash. And then from here, we're going to see what happens if it's going to give us the cash management user interface. And once it's done, um, what we'll do is we'll give the cash a very quick run test just to see that it's functioning accordingly. Then I'm going to power down this Synology NAS, remove the card, remove the NVMe SSD, and then reinstall the card we've just the Samsung 860 disks inside. In other words, just using the SATA part of this PCIe card to see if this card will let us utilize those SATA 6 gigabit SSDs on that board. For now, it looks like this cache is gonna take a little bit longer than I thought it would. So I might have to fast forward this video a little bit forward to when the cache has been created. Right, so we're a few minutes later and we can see that the cache is now being tested by the Synology NAS itself. Anyone that's ever installed and created an area of SSD cache on a Synology NAS, whether you're using um, an SSD cache card or you're using bays that are already in your NAS, such as the DS1019 and 918 Plus, you'll know that the testing is kind of a vital part of it. They're just checking basically the robustness of the SSD and just making sure that the cache has been set up correctly. Um, this test hopefully means we'll be reaching the end of this and our cache will be available for us to use. Once it is, what I'm going to do is make my way over to the file manager. Then I'm going to conduct um, a few multiple read and write tests simultaneously on this card. And then from there, that should trigger the cache in the background. So if we move that there, what we'll do while that's doing its caching... We'll find a nice large area of storage. Perhaps the, perhaps the test folders from before are still there. So we can go for that. Can't move that. So what we'll do is we're going to copy just three instances of the same files like we've done in previous videos. We're going to create a new folder here while that's doing its caching and building cache on the existing stuff. So put that there, cache test, a new folder. And once that's up and running, we will then copy the same folders and files three times into these respective folders. There we go, the cache has been co completed. So we'll leave that there on screen. And then what I'll do is I'll start creating multiple instances of read and write actions using the same data inside this NAS. That should trigger the cache kicking in. So we'll do a paste overwrite there. And straight away, we, because we're utilizing the same files and folders, it will start creating instances of cache usage. We'll do another folder here. We'll call this one cache test two. From here, we're going to do exactly the same thing. And we should start seeing those same files because remember, those other folders, the test folders, are what we used in our previous cache test video. And in that one is where we saw speed increases with the same files being utilized. Now, this video isn't going to be about whether cache is a good or a bad thing. For that, I recommend you check out my other videos. But for now, I'm going to cease this operation just to show that the cache is functioning on this card. I'm going to cease um, this device's operations. I'm going to completely remove the cache. And then I'm going to remove the NVMe drive from this PCIe card, leaving just the two SATA drives to see if this Synology NAS will switch over to those SSDs in set instead. So let's end these operations. We're going to cancel that. We're going to cancel that. 
then while that's stopping when I'm going to remove the area of cache it will probably ask me to enter my password which we are doing and we shall now relinquish that cache while this is going on we're still screen recording and sound recording so I'm going to leave that there in the background likewise just so we don't make these mistakes in future we're going to delete both those areas of cache folders we created I'll no doubt move over to the recycle bin and now as it gets rid of that cache and completely closes that cache area relinquishing access to those MVMEs I'm not going to let you guys have to sit around and wait for this I'm going to remove that PCIe card oh, obviously powering the device down first and then I'm going to run this with just the SATA SSDs inside so let's fast forward to that being set up Right, so here we are back on the desktop interface. I'm just typing in my password, a little bit too close to the microphone for some, I'm sure. And we're logging back in. Now, hopefully on screen, you've seen me install the card back inside the device earlier on with the NVMe removed. And now we're going to take a bloody good look at the user interface of this device to see if we can access the SATA-based um, M2 SSDs on this card. I'll be honest, I'm not holding out for much. It didn't do it on a QNAP, so let's see if it's going to do it on this. Um, immediately, it's not shown us anything to do with the cache on that card. If we go to the hard drives and SSD section, we are not seeing them there either. If we go to SSD cache, it's not even letting us create that area of SSD cache, which I think means we may have to accept this is not going to work. But it is a very, very affordable way to get an NVMe SSD cache bay on your device. Now, there are dual NVMe cards available from Starter. They're a little bit more expensive, there's no denying it, but it is an option that's open to you. But do remember that Synology themselves do not recommend utilizing third-party cards for this SSD caching. And for all I know, this kind of compatibility may change over time. But Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. I've got loads more StarTech experiment videos to come, along with a whole section about affordable USBs and why you really need to spend a little bit more. But otherwise, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to click like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.